Experiment E12 is one of our more interesting and dramatic experiments. In it, we're going to measure a fundamental constant, the ratio of the charge to the mass of the electron. In fact, it was this experiment which first established that electrons were subatomic particles, and it won the 1906 Nobel Prize for J.J. Thompson. The basis for the experiment is this tube which has this little black cylinder in it which is called a hot cathode electron gun. Uh, there's a wire that runs down the middle of it which is the cathode and that uh, eventually produces cathode rays. Cathode rays had been known long before J.J. Thompson's time but it was not known that they were subatomic charged particles. So, we have to make the cathode hot, and we do that by connecting this power supply here to the two ends of that filament. So we go from the positive side of this power supply to the input marked F+, plus and from the negative side of this power supply to the input marked F minus. This lets us pass a current through that cathode and get it hot enough to boil off electrons. Now, for the electrons to go anywhere, there has to be an electric field. And the black part of that cylinder is the anode of the electron gun and we make it positive with this power supply here and we connect it to the input called the anode and that makes the black cylinder positive the negative electrons are accelerated outward from the cathode and some of them come through a little slit in the side of the electron gun and they shoot out into the tube. My electrons are invisible, but there's some mercury vapor in the tube, and when the electrons hit the mercury atoms, uh, the mercury atoms are stimulated to give off light, and so you'll see the typical blue light that you see with a mercury vapor lamp. Okay, now we also need to know uh, we, uh, the voltage of both of these power supplies and we also need to complete the anode circuit. So we'll need a wire from the ground of the anode supply either over here to F minus or at the other end of that wire. And since my wire is a little short, I'll hook it at this end. Now I have two voltmeters here and so I'll use this one to measure the anode voltage and I'll use this one to measure the filament voltage. I'll turn both of those to the DC volts position. Okay, now, the other part of the circuit is over here. The anode, or the uh, field coil. In order to bend these charged particles, we need a magnetic field. Now, the Earth's magnetic field is in this direction, and it'll bend them a little bit to the right. Well, we want to bend them around to the left so we can hit those five pins inside the tube. So we do that with this part of the circuit over here. We come from the output of this power supply. Now, we need to measure current in this part of the circuit. Current is always measured in series. So from the power supply, we go into the 20 amp input of this meter. We come out of the meter, and we go on over here to the top input on the field coils. This one right here. There are 72 turns of wire in this one, 72 turns of wire in this one, they're already connected in series for you. So you just have to put the current in here and then take it out down here and back 
to the power supply. Okay, now, when your TA has checked out your circuit and made sure that everything is correct, then you can plug in all of the equipment, and I'll do that now. Now, the first thing let's do, let's turn on this meter and press the 20 amp selection. The light goes off pretty quickly. This button right here by the lower right hand corner is the backlight button. So when you need to measure the current, just push that button and the backlight will come on again. Now let's turn this power supply on. All right, this is showing us that we do have current a little over two amperes going into this field coil. Now this box here lets us control that current. Okay, so everything here is working fine. Now if we go over to this side of the circuit, I can see here that the anode is receiving just about 48 volts. And the filament, there's no voltage on it yet because I have not turned this part on. And this job is to be done by your TA, so do not do this yourself. If you burn out the cathode, it costs us about $500, so <clears throat> it's better if the TA does it. Not burn out the cathode, adjust it. Okay, here we go. I'll turn this on. Now, we're going to shut the lights off so that you can see the electron beam form. Now, watch the electron gun as I start increasing the filament current. Starting to get hot. And there is the electron beam. As you see, it's bent into a circle. And you can see that the pins are glowing green. That's a phosphorescence effect from the electrons hitting the, the fluorescent material that the pins are painted with. Now, as we adjust the current in the field coils, we can make the beam smaller or larger. We want to set the middle of the beam to where it just about hits the near edge of pin number one, and then we'll, that's about 3.97 amps, and we'll do that for each of the five pins in turn. And when you've done that for all five of the pins at the 48 volt, anode voltage, simply move the connection over to the other anode voltage and repeat the process. So you'll have 10 measurements uh, in your data sheet. Now one other measurement that you need is the dimensions of the Helmholtz coil. Helmholtz coil configuration is two sets of coils with equal numbers of turns, in this case 72, separated by a distance equal to the radius. So we need to know the radius of the coils. So probably the easy way to do that is to put the meter stick up here and take a measurement of the outer diameter. I'm getting a little bit over 68 centimeters and then the inner diameter, and that looks like about 65 centimeters and maybe a little change. <clears throat> it might be wise to measure it in several places. And then if you average the outer and inner diameter, that'll give you approximately the diameter to the center of the coils, and divided by two, you'll get the radius and it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of 33 centimeters. Um, when you put it all into the calculations, you need to convert everything into SI units. 
And then you set up a spreadsheet and do all those horrendous calculations to get all those values of E over M and take the average and report that in your lab report.